oil and vinegar. That's it. We talking about that today on Prep to Lay. Preppers, I am your culinary motivator, E. Denise, and you hanging out in my kitchen because you know, just like in your kitchen, ain't nothing happening. If you're not in your kitchen, you are not living. Welcome to Prep to Live. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that has so many variations. You like that? Variation. We're going to talk vinegars and oils because there's so many out there and there's so much being said about it. Today, we're going to talk about a few, just my opinion, and of course, I've got some of this information from like the American Heart Association and all of that, but we're going to go over a few of them today, all right? So let's start. So vinegar is made by basically fermenting alcoholic liquids. Oh, yes. No, I'm just joking. But it is. It really is. And that's where it gets its distinct color and flavor. Um, can vinegar go bad? Yes, just because it's cloudy doesn't mean that it's bad. Because we all know apple cider vinegar looks a little crazy sometimes. But that's all you do. It's fine. But, yeah, I mean, you don't want to keep it five, six years. Come on, people. You know, don't forget the dates. Don't forget. We already went through that. And I think I'm going to have to take y'all back in your cabinets. It's okay. So, listen, it has an acidic nature. So, that keeps it, you know, good. That acid keeps it. And stored in a cool, dry place away from heat, it lasts. It really, really does. Make sure you got a tight lid on it, though. And um, any sediments, like I say, you just shake it up and keep it moving. There's a lot of health benefits, especially in apple cider vinegar. Y'all know this already. We talking about cholesterol, fights diabetes, all of that. I ain't no doctor. Listen, I have all kind of disclosures because I'm not a doctor. That's what they can see. <laughs> you know them. So we get ready to go through all of these great vinegars and talk about the properties of each of them. All right, let's talk about this red wine vinegar. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I didn't know nothing about no red wine vinegar. This right here is all we knew about. <laughs> but just like everything in time, things have evolved and different things. Well, these two, because I live next door to the cookiness. You like that? Italian family in the world. So this was a staple. So this is what I saw. All the rest of this fancy schmancy, but red wine vinegar. It's sweet and it's crisp. It's similar to like white wine vinegar, but it has more of a red wine base. Um, it's less acidic, which is good. And it's more Mediterranean, mellow flavor, and it's perfect for like vinaigrettes and reductions. What's a reduction? <laughs> you already know that's gonna be an episode. Come on, people. Red wine vinegar. Oh, I smell the sweetness, but I smell the zesty. It's kind of like me. Ha! <laughs> Sweet and zesty. <laughs> that's me, red wine vinegar. One of my favorite is. You heard what I said. You know I'll make up a word in a minute. Balsamic vinegar. Also, sweet and zesty, like me. This is straight out of Italy. Only type of vinegar that is not produced 
by fermenting alcohol. Boring, you say? <laughs> no, it's not. This one to me has the most flavor. It's like fine wine, once again, <laughs> like me. Um, it's made by like pressing aged uh, grapes in like oak barrels. Tell me that don't sound good and authentic. <sighs> like me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the older, the balsamic, yeah, the higher the price tag, I'm telling you. But it is good for the drizzle or mix with olive oil to make like a classic balsamic balsamic vinaigrette dressing. Um, I love to take this and drizzle it when I put it with the, um, you saw I just left y'all because I closed my eyes, baby. You take some good mozzarella, slice that thing, right? A tomato from your garden, of course, because you're gonna have a garden. Like one of them big tomatoes, slice it up. Put this with some, some olive oil and dressing. Didn't I tell you this was my favorite? It is. Love it. All right, the you know, this is probably sitting in your kitchen right now, somewhere in your cabinet. Hopefully the date is correct. Purge. Um, but this is white distilled vinegar. Now, it's sharp and it's pungent. That's how I can be sometimes. A little sharp, a little pungent. That means I say what I want to say. No, um, this is like the most common type of vinegar and everybody in the world uses it. It has like a sharp and harsh smell sometimes, but it good. It ain't nothing bad about it. It's good. It's just who it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sometimes it's uh, too pungent for a lot of recipes. Um, it's great for pickling again. And it's used in like zesty barbecue sauces. Um, you got salad dressings, ketchup. This is what we use to make our ketchup. Yes, it did. And it kind of balances out the sweet in a lot of recipes. If your recipe is too sweet, just add a pinch of this good old distilled vinegar and it'll mellow it out. That's how I am sometimes when I enter a room. If everybody just have, let me stop. No, yeah, X that. Anyway, so we have what has become like America's favorite vinegar, apple cider vinegar. It's tart and fruity. Well, I'm not tart. Um, but this has a lot of serious properties. People are saying it does wonders. Uh, people use it, wash their hair, um, their skin. And it's just amazing. Like this stuff is just crazy. You get both flavors and it preserves food. It's got a golden hue. <laughs> that sounds so fancy. And as you can see, it does. It does. Granted, you know, you get the sediments at the bottom and I already told you, shake it on up. It adds uh, tart and fruity flavors to marinades, salad dressings, teas. Yes, tea, coleslaws, chutneys. You don't know what a chutney is? You got to know that's gonna be an episode because baby, you use this in a good chutney, put it on a cracker, mm, apple cider vinegar. This is some good stuff. So these are our great vinegars. Are there more? Oh my God. There's a list as long as your arm. But today we wanted to talk about these because these are the major ones. In my book, who am I? I'm your culinary motivator and I say it. I'm E Denise Peoples, and this is Prep to Live. Here at Prep to Live, we want you to be ready for everything. That's why we're talking about things such as oil and vinegar today. I want you to know like what does what. And of course, one of the major things about oil is like how hot can it get? So we're gonna talk about some different things today. So we got canola oils, we have corn, olive, peanut, sunflower, soybeans, sun rice. I mean, we got so many different blends. 
and types of oil, even back to the days of lard. Y'all remember lard? Came in a can with a key. Okay, lard. Um, and it used to sit in a can on the back of the stove after it was done, called a grease can. We ain't talking that today, but we will. So listen, blends or uh, combinations of oils often um, you know, they get sold under the name of vegetable oil and cooking oils and sprays and all of that. But today we're going to break it down and talk about these oils. So some of them are easy to find, some of them are hard to find, but we're going to go through these special ones today. All right, so in general health reasons, you want to choose an oil that has less saturated fat, okay, per tablespoon. And not, you know the hydro uh, oils and all of that stuff. Of course, that's why I tell you to read the labels. You gotta read the labels and find oils that are distinctive and flavor. So you get your flavor, but you also get in your health. And some oils are, you know, are better for frying and some oils uh, contain certain types of cooking properties. So it's all different things. And you can usually use cooking oils just like, you know, solid cooking fat. Um, so you have things like make your own salad dressings and marinades, which you know that's what we do. Dips and sauces. We grill, saute, stir fry, uh, you know, all kind of stuff. We do all of that with our cooking oil. We coat pans to keep the food, you know, from sticking. Um, season. Have you ever seasoned a cast iron pan? Well, my opinion, and we'll talk about it, grapeseed oil is good for that. But anyhow, so you just substitute butter and margarine and solid fat in recipes for oil sometimes. And it's a lot healthier. So let's get started to really get down to the nitty gritty of the oil. Hey, all my preppers and future preppers, I'm your girl, E. Denise, from Prep to Live. And listen, I know how it is. You are prepping. You got an idea over here on a sticky note. You got a recipe over there just to Prep to Live. Well, guess what? You don't even have to do that anymore because Prep to Live has something for you. the prep to live journal that's right this is your preppers guide and you don't have to put papers everywhere you can keep it all together because this is your guide to prepare eat reflect and repeat and you can do it all in here and it's on amazon ready for you today prep to live All right, first, let's talk about coconut oil. As you can see, coconut oil can be solid or it can be liquid. All right, so it's like two different things. Um, you wanna use it at like 350 low temp for like baking and sauteing, and it can be kept at room temperature. You don't, like this does not turn to liquid because it is sitting out and it lasts for months. It's great health benefits. It improves cholesterol, kills bacteria, um, boosts your metabolism slightly, and it gives you more energy. So you know what this is good for. <clears throat> okay. It's a superfood, really. It's on the superfood list. It can be virgin or unrefined. Coconut oil is the best. Go light, high in saturated fats, and you know you've got to be kind of careful with saturated fats. Um, it also comes uh, refined. And that one you can use in high temps, like uh, for roasting and sauteing, like making some smoke, baby, 450, all right? So that is our coconut oil. Next is EVOO, extra virgin olive oil, y'all. It's well known and frequently used. You know everybody's using it. It's healthy and it's versatile. Um, it has healthy fats, low sodium, um, low smoke points, which is great. That is the best because when something has a higher one, it like degrades and it releases uh, damaging free radicals. So you don't want to heat this over 375 because that's what will happen. It's good for colder dishes like dips and salad dressings and stuff like that. You can just put this right on top of a salad and be happy with this good stuff. You know my situation though. I like her, but sometimes I feel a little too much olive. So I use the lighter version. I use the one that's called smooth. 
<laughs> like who? Like me and you. All right, sesame oil. This one can go to a heat level between 350 and 400. Great for stir frying, sauteing, added flavor as a condiment. Oh my gosh, it is so good. And it's got plenty of good fats and that's the monounsaturated fats and the antioxidants. So this one is great for that. And I always, you know, when I think about it, you know, that sesame oil, I think about that toasty flavor. I love sesame oil. I like putting it in dressings. It's good, it's good, it's good. And um, let's see, next we've got avocado oil. Now I've got to be honest with you. I bought some avocado oil not too long ago. Baby, when I tell you it stank to the high heavens, and you know I'm not trying to waste nothing. But I had to throw it away. Baby, that stank like, oh, it was stinky inky. But this one is really good. You can go high temps, like I'm talking 520 people. This thing right here is serious. Avocado oil is made for high temps, especially like the unrefined virgin uh, avocado oil. That one's a little less on the high scale with the heat, 480 is about there. So grilling, baking, sauteing, stir frying, roasting, frying, all of that is great. It's uh, healthy. Um, monounsaturated fats and it's it's just good it's good fats um, it's a carry oil uh, because other flavors shine through it so even though it's high as far as the heat content you can add things to it and you know change it around let them marry you know how I feel about that I'm just not married it's a refined and it gives mild and like unobstructed taste so you can kind of like pair it with different things so that's our good avocado oil. How can you have Thai, Chinese, or any other Asian dish without peanut oil? You can't. Don't even strike up your stove. You need it because that is like a main ingredient, a main staple. It's high with a smoke point, like 450, and it's great for stir frying, large batch frying. And when I say large batch, I'm talking turkey. Everybody falling at the store trying to find this in the big containers at Thanksgiving because this right here is amazing. But please, people, let your people that's coming over for Thanksgiving know, hey, boo-boo, that turkey right there was fried in peanut oil because when <laughs> that good allergy kicks up, Thanksgiving going to be over. You're going to be mad because you're going to have your table spread run into the what? emergency room. So make sure you can, you take care of that. Now unrefined, you can go up to like 320 and that's better for dressings and uh, marinades for that extra flavor because this is a flavorful bowl. <laughs> Can't talk today. Flavorful bowl. That sounds good. Oil. Grapeseed oil. Mm. Whenever I use my cast iron, I let it cool down. We're going to talk about cookware also, but my little, let my cast iron cool down, then I wash it really good, and then it's time to re-grease her, to re-baste her, and this is what I use. I love grapeseed oil. It has a smoke point of like 400. It's clean and light to taste. It's good for dressings and baking, and that's a pretty high heat point, which is great. Searing meats, stir fries, all of that is high in omega-6, and it's derived from the seeds of a grape. Not a grape, but you know, grapes. It's good for everyday uh, cooking, good everyday oil, pasta sauces, soups, dressing. It is even good for your hair. Now you tell me grapeseed oil ain't covered in everything. Let me tell you something, this with some salt, a little bit of salt, somebody say that's crown to salt because you can put it on your feet. Honey, take some salt, Add a little grapeseed oil and get them corns and calluses. Get between it for that toe jam. You can do that. <laughs> I don't know why I went there. I don't have no toe jam. I'm trying to help you out. But yeah, grapeseed oil is good for everything. Crown to salt. All right, y'all have played enough with all of these oils. This is a heart healthy oil. Sunflower oil. Um... The smoke point is like 450. It is great. It has a nutty flavor that is great for like sauteing, deep frying, baking, 
So as you see, that's all kind of ways you can use this. It's versatile and it's good for your hair and your skin. If that junk is dry or dull, this is the one you want to use. I love it that these pure oils, you're able to do other things with it. That sounds like generational health and generational wealth. So you can use this on crown to sole. It is absolutely great. Um, it has a great, like I said, a nutty flavor. So I like to put it in things like a dip. Oh my goodness, it tastes so good in dip. So got to check this one out. This is the sunflower oil. Now, ghee, ghee, ghee. I don't care what you want to call it, it's clarified butter. All right, so this originated from India, Middle Eastern cuisines. Light butter, but slightly roasted. Y'all know I love that already. Nutty, um, it's got like that background note of just a subtle nuttiness. And, um, it's lactose uh, free, it's got you know proteins, all of that's been removed, and it's a pure butter fat, which is great. No milk solids, all that's been removed, and you can use it at high temps. So a lot of people who are, you know, have problems with, um, what is it, all different types of ailments when it comes to dairy, this is the one. This is the one. And I believe it comes in liquid, but I like the solid. I really do. So try that one. Ghee. I don't know why I always want to say it like that and like tighten up right here. <laughs> Did you use your ghee? Put a spoon up. Ghee. Baby. <laughs> All right, so I am back with the choir. Yes, we have the altos, sopranos, and here are the tenors. And this is the praise team. Anyway, so, <laughs> so listen, we have talked about oil and vinegar today. Little different things, tidbits that you can use when you go to the store, you're looking at them, you're checking stuff out, you're reading the back so that you will know what you're getting. We always try to make sure you have a little understanding about stuff and we want you to understand it so well that you put it in your preference journal. That's right, put it right in here. When you go to the grocery store, have your little pen and write it down because you fancy, you got the preference journal. If you don't have it, uh -huh. what? Amazon got them, we'll get them. And um, <laughs> so we talked about this. Now, let's talk real quick about how you want to store it. Okay, this is a nice bottle, but you don't want it out. When, you, when it's time to have a little oil and vinegar, you don't have to bring this out. So you can go to a dollar store, because I didn't say the name, and they have these. This is the cutest in the world. Got a little cork, stays very tight so that it's fresh. Same things for, for these, mix it up, or you can put it in a taller um, carafe, put both, janka, 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 and do your thing. So storing it is important. The dates are important because you don't want it to be rancid. So make sure you smell your oil and your vinegar because you can tell when it's just not, mm, it's just, mm. you don't want it, mm, you want it nice, nice. Because you're gonna cook with it, you're gonna put it on salads, you're gonna do all kinds of things, but you're gonna put it on your body. You're gonna put it from crown to sole and inside. So you can't go wrong with oil and vinegar, all right? I love you all to pieces. Make sure you follow us, like us, talk back to us on all social media platforms. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We got an amazing website and we're on Inspired Living Network. Child, we everywhere. We everywhere. Follow us. Make sure you turn on the notifications so when we speak, you hear. All right? Don't forget to get your preference in journal. Um, it is really a great companion piece. All right? All right, I love you all to pieces. It has been my pleasure. You know who I am, right? The Culinary Motivator. Hope you had a great day today. And remember, if you are not in your kitchen, child, you ain't living. <laughs>